five o'clock, you have a photo with 60 students from the Seiko Middle School. Oh. 5.30, resources meeting on the reproductive habits of Alaskan crab. Oh, please, not again. I have enough trouble keeping up with my own time of the month. How am I supposed to track some fish? Miss Hollingsworth, uh, I just wanted to let you know the intern is here. Thank you, Dave. Tell her we'll be right out. What intern? Why am I always the last person to find anything out around here? I thought I told you it's part of that new congressional intern program that the leadership has started called Second Sweep. They went around the country targeting young persons who had very good test scores in high school but for some reason did not pursue college. No, I don't remember any of that. Of course, isn't it the kind of thing I'd file away for later? Well, anyway, they have asked certain congressional offices to help redirect these young persons' energies toward public service. And, well, I personally thought that this would be a wonderful opportunity to point some bright, eager young person toward republicanism. And, you know, all that that entails. You know, Natty, you really were born at the wrong time. You should have been running one of those summer camps in the Alps for Hitler youth. Ha <laughs> uh ha, -huh. very funny. Well, let's get out there and meet this girl, get the show on the road. Of course, if she's college age, you know she's gonna need makeup instruction. I think it'd also be great if she ran some errands for us. You know, went out to the cafeteria and got me some more of that turkey jerky. <laughs> Hello, I'm Natalie Hollingsworth, representative of Sugar Baker's uh, administrative assistant. Beta Walkman, WALK man. You know, like the little radio people wearing their heads? Uh-huh. <laughs> This is Representative Suzanne Sugarbaker, mm -hmm. and this is Sissy Emerson, our press secretary. Hey. Hello. Well, this is really very cool. God, I love your office. I hadn't expected it to be so big. Why don't you just sit down over here and tell us all about yourself, Velma? It's Veda. Like Vegas, but with a D and without the G and the S. <clears throat> anyway. God, I just wanted to thank you all for this wonderful opportunity. See, I was in trade school working and training to be a manicurist, which is actually a lot more involved than you might think. I mean, it is not just for any chick with a toe separator. <laughs> That's a very good point. That's something I've often said. Funny. What was your name again? Oh, it's Sissy, like Mississippi, except with an S and a Y, and without the is a pippy. <laughs> My boss was this real Dolores type with totally retro hair. Hey, just like yours. <laughs> but anyway, don't get me wrong. See, I'm not one of those Generation X buttheads who sits around whining about the future and watching dead TV shows all day. No, see, I want to work and own my own BMW someday. <laughs> and that's why I'm so grateful for this opportunity to learn more about my government and maybe figure out why all those FBI guys have to look like such geeks. <laughs> so, Veda, you mean to say you came directly here from this manicurist job? Oh, well, not exactly. Here's my file. Oh. Hey, do you mind if I get something to drink? I worked in this 4 by 4 cubicle for the phone company for a couple weeks, but it totally freaked me out. You know, I felt like I was one of those veal fattening pens. Anyway, you have my file. Oh, just so you know, you can't return me. All the other interns have already been placed. I'm the only one left, and uh, the speaker's office said I'd be perfect for you. <laughs> As you can see, I had an unfortunate incident with the law recently. This bank executive weenie told the police that I'd copy down somebody else's credit card number while I was cashing a check. Of course, none of this is true. <laughs> this person happened to be an old friend who just couldn't remember me. You know, your ACT scores are very impressive, Veda. I must say, I'm surprised that you didn't pursue college. Well, my ACTs were good, but my grades were bad and my family's poor, which is why I became a vegetarian, on account of all the spam. <laughs> Yes, just put it right over there. Right by that anal compulsively neat desk. Next to, oh, no, actually, put it on the chair. Oh, that's good. That's great. Did it give you any trouble? Uh, no, we just told the administrative aide what you said, you know, that uh, we're from landscape mm -hmm. maintenance and this plant needs extra care. <laughs> oh, that's great, Adam. Thanks a lot. Now, I owe you one. <laughs> hey, what's this? A new exciting floral motif? What's the occasion? Well, it was Natty's birthday last week and I forgot to get her something, so we stole that plant out of Newt Gingrich's office for her. <laughs> Newt Gingrich, he's that new guy, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yes, I mean, he's the new Speaker of the House. Yeah. Well, Dave here pointed him out, and that was cool. You know, he kind of looks like the guy you'd hire to be the baby at a New Year's Eve party. <laughs> right, that's him. Yeah. That's very good. Well, you know, I was going to get her one of those male strippers, but it was just too expensive, so... <laughs> really? That's so 80s. Well, that's why I didn't do it. I, I, I was going to do it, but I didn't because it's just so 80s. <laughs> well, uh, I guess I better get back to my post. I enjoyed showing you the National Gallery, Miss Walkman. Oh, hey, it's Veda. And Veda. thank you, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> 
Sorry, I have a headache from all the sexual tension. You had lunch at the National Gallery? Yeah, and oh, they were having this Andrew Wyeth exhibit and Dave bought me a poster of that handicapped chick sitting in a field. <laughs> Look, Nanny, I don't mind going to all these committee meetings. That's my job. But there ought to be a time limit on how long some of these people can talk like that spotted owl guy. I got nothing against owls. I like owls. But enough's enough. This guy just goes on and on. Okay. So the spotted owl might become extinct. We have other things that have become extinct. Look at that hula hoop deal. Look at that Eddie Fisher. You don't hear anybody crying over him. You sound just like my grandmother. She says, all you young people do is whine and complain. Why, when I was a young girl, we didn't even have an ozone. And like, her answer to everything is always, have a soda and a candy bar and you'll feel better. So, Vega, what's the deal here? You got lunch or what? <laughs> Vega, you kill me. That's hilarious. It's Veda. Why do you have so much trouble with my name? But your name's weird, and so are you. <laughs> It has been one week, and I love this woman. Yes, I got your lunch for you. I mean, did you really think I was going to screw up this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to better myself? <laughs> yeah. I stopped by the cafeteria, and I got your sandwich for you, and I even got some extra corned beef because uh, I'm dating the guy who oversees all the meat. <laughs> Excuse me, Veda, but I think the idea of getting extra meat for dating favors is just a trifle unsavory. Oh, I don't know, Daddy. This is some pretty good-looking corned beef. <laughs> Where did this plant come from? Oh, uh, <clears throat> it's from me. Happy belated birthday, Natty. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah, well, you didn't have to do that. <laughs> it's beautiful, and that planter. You know, I've seen that somewhere before. Well, look, I'm gonna eat this in my office. If the president calls, just put him through. You know, I saw him on TV again this morning, drinking out of that dicky little styrofoam cup. I have told him and told him, you cannot be the leader of the free world if you look like the guy behind the counter ducking donuts. <laughs> if the president calls, you just put him through? That is so cool. I, I worship her. <laughs> oh. you know, as a matter of fact, I love all you guys. <laughs> well, thank you, Veda. Well, you're welcome. I mean, you're the first fun old people I've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> I think I need a soda and a candy bar. Yeah, I think I better get back to my desk and get through my paperwork before they come to take me to the home. <laughs> now remember, Veda, we have a date tonight. Mm. So you're dating Natty, too? Oh, no, I'm not gay. I mean, unless somebody wants me to be. Silly, I'm taking her to Young Republicans. <sighs> yeah, and I can't wait. I just love all those Bob Hope jokes. Uh -huh. Oh, sissy? Uh-huh. Look, I know this is, like, not cool, but... I wore this totally short skirt to work today, and I don't have time to go home and change before I go to this Young Republicans thing with Natty. And she said there's going to be, like, dancing, and I do want to make a good impression. No, don't so. worry about it. The, the Republicans don't really dance. They just sort of tilt back and forth. <laughs> yeah, well, just the same. I mean, it, it's slit in the back up to here, and I mean, if I bend at all... <laughs> so what do you need? Your underpants? <laughs> What did Vida do? It's Veda. And what didn't she do? I mean, I, I don't even know where to begin. Well, for one thing, she started a moshing incident. Moshing? Now, what is that? How come I don't know any of this stuff? <laughs> it's where people take you and pass you around, like at a concert, with their hands above their heads. And of course, when the person being passed around is a woman in a dress, well, you can see all the way to New Jersey. <laughs> I knew it. Now I'm sorry I didn't lend her my underpants. She has to borrow your underpants? Yeah, it's shocking, isn't it? it certainly is. She has to borrow mine, too. It wasn't her who got passed around. It was me. Gosh, Natty, I hope your bun didn't come undone. Anyway, everything she said and did was just wildly inappropriate. At one point, she was in the upstairs bathroom giving all the men free pedicures and who knows what else. <laughs> Last thing I remember as I was leaving, she was talking to Ralph Reed, head of the Christian Coalition, telling him he should have his nipple pierced. <laughs> I just don't understand young people today. I mean, why would you want a ring sticking through your nose or your navel? Like some of those models who get stuff shot in their lips. I mean, I don't understand that either. Where does that come from? Do you just wake up from the morning and look in the mirror and go, you know, I think I'll make my lips the size of Florida. I don't know, but I'll tell you one thing. I think she's doing Dave. Oh, come on. Dave's 
ask a fossil. She wouldn't do Dave. I don't know. Last week, his arthritis was so bad he could hardly walk. Now he's got so much spring in his step, he could go to the Olympics. <laughs> That's true. He has been pretty perky lately. Dave's nobody. I mean, there would be nothing in it for her. He doesn't even have extra meat. <laughs> oh, I don't think Veda cares. She puts her quarter in anybody's slot machine on the chance that it might come up four cherries. <laughs> that is so disgusting. Sorry. No, the idea that Dave guy have an extra meat. <laughs> you know, it's this whole Generation X thing. I mean, they're the new bohemians. She says she's not like them. She is. I mean, she may not be cruising the internet, but she's going to those Nine Nails concerts or whatever that is. Anyway, now somebody's gonna have to talk to Velma. I may not have taken this town by storm, but I'll tell you, I used to have somewhat of a reputation for old world grace and fine manners. And now this girl's running around in an ace banded skirt asking everybody if my knockers are real. <laughs> All right, don't worry about it. I'll take her to lunch and tell her it just isn't working out. I'll ask her when she gets back from her coffee break with Adam. Excuse me. Miss <laughs> um, Hollingsworth. Uh, there are some people here from Representative Gingrich's office uh, to see you. <laughs> I rest my case. Representative Gingrich's office? What on earth could this be about? Gee, maybe he's gonna ask you to the big dance Saturday. <laughs> Just take this back to our office. Excuse me, I'm Natalie Hollingsworth. Can I help you? Yes, I just wanted to let you know that this plant belongs to Representative Gingrich. I have no idea how it got here, but he has been very upset. I suggest that you see that this does not happen again. <laughs> I am so embarrassed. You know, I had no idea. This was given to me as a birthday present, I swear. Right. <laughs> what was that all about? Oh, well, it's very sad, isn't it? You know, Natty just worships Newt. I guess she couldn't keep her hands off his ficus. <laughs>— There's something I really need to talk to you about. — Okay, but I just want to say one more thing about working with all of you. Sometimes I do totally spontaneous things, I know, but that doesn't mean I don't have any class. You see, like, my friend Sylvia, she's a really good person, but sometimes she does some, like, majorly uncouth things, like leave her diaphragm lying around on the coffee table. I mean, I keep mine in a lovely complimentary felt pouch I got with some Calvin Klein cologne. You know, I got fired from this really shishy dry cleaners once because I wrote my name on Calvin Klein's underwear. Oh, sure, he does it. Nobody cares, but I do it. You have a very interesting way of looking at things. Never met anyone quite like you. Oh, I never met anyone like those young Republicans before. I mean, that was totally hilarious, you know, the way they were trying so hard. Hey, look at us. We're having a party. We're dancing. We got cool music. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Veda, it is hard when you're always stereotyped as being uncool just because of your beliefs. I mean, that's something you probably don't understand because you've always been with the cool people. You don't know what it's like to be different, to be left out. Yeah, you're probably right. But, you know, I can remember this one time feeling like that. I hadn't seen my dad for five years, and he was supposed to pick me up at this birthday party, and when he got there, he didn't know which one I was. But, I mean, that's not as big a deal as your deal. I mean, being left out because of your beliefs. <laughs> right. <laughs> she just, you know, has these stories, and that little giggle, and... No, there's this way that she looks at you. It's, I don't know, it's a combination. It's the stories, the looks, the giggles, it's the whole thing. It's just too much. I can't do it. And then, of course, there's the fact that, well, she admires us so much. Oh, hell, I hate that. Why does she have to admire us? Why can't she just admire Oprah? I know, I hate it too. I can't believe this. Well, I guess I'll just have to go clean up your mess for you. Oh, fine. You think you're so tough? Be my guest. Go out there right now and tell her you're going to take her out to dinner. Fine, I will. And you better make sure that the dress code doesn't require underpants. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Very fun. <laughs> you know, he's the son of the jackass you had as your mascot at your 92 convention. I'm sure you have a lovely room for him at home. You know, this is gonna cost you. Ooh. Now we're talking major pain. 
think I'll leave you two alone to bond. Hmm? <laughs> you know, I think it's totally cool the way you guys all honk each other off with these little practical jokes. I mean, it's not even that they're really that funny. It's just that you care enough to go to the trouble to do it. <laughs> you know, it kind of reminds me of, like, when my grandmother plays jokes on her bingo buddies. <laughs> Veda, how would you like to have dinner with me tonight? Cool. What the hell's this donkey doing out here? Uh, oh, he was just delivered. Tomorrow was National Donkey Day. <laughs> See what I mean? Nobody ever tells me anything. <laughs> so basically, all the women in my family are like completely crazy. Oh, especially my Aunt Seal. She's got like 5,000 doilies in her house and gets way too upset when celebrities die. It's totally embarrassing. <laughs> You know what I don't like about your generation, Veda? You sit there with your smug intellects and your laptop computers and your online faces, and you're just so damn cynical about your family, your country, even the generation before you. What gives you the right to be cynical? You didn't go to Vietnam. You didn't fight for women's rights. You weren't even born yet when they were killing Kennedy. So why don't you all just shut the hell up? <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know where that came from. I haven't even had a drink. <laughs> oh, that's okay. You know, my grandmother says the same thing. She wasn't really keen on raising me. She had to work really hard for her money. She was married to this big, dumb doorknob for 22 years, and when he died, she took all of his life savings and had all this plastic surgery done. Hmm. Now she travels around in this silver Winnebago with a bumper sticker on the back that says, Ask me about my new butt. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least it's not something really corny like, Ask me about my grandchild. Because that would be totally embarrassing. <laughs> Yeah, right. Yeah. I'm sorry. I did the best I could, but she's tricky. Just when you get ready to lay it on her, she's got this attitude, you know, that's just completely vulnerable. She kind of reminds me of Bambi. Bambi in combat boots with a toilet mouth. <laughs> that's okay. We understand, miss. I'll be happy to fire her any time, any place. No, don't mess with me. I've been up half the night mixing donkey formula. Well, this is getting a little bit ridiculous. I'll just take the girl to lunch today myself and tell her to hit the road. I mean, enough's enough. Yes, what is it, Beta? Did you need something? <clears throat> well, I just have one question. Which one of you bitches is my mother? <laughs> Actually, I just want to let you know those reports from Representative Delaney's office are here. Thanks, I'll be right out. <laughs> Am I crazy, or did she just come in here and call us all bitches? No, it's a line from an old TV miniseries. You never heard that? No. It was pretty famous. For what? I don't know. It was kind of campy. I guess you had to be there. You know, I'm beginning to think I spent a little too much time in the old isolation booth. <laughs> The reason I invited you here today, Leela, is because I want to explain to you my personal philosophy about success and failure. Now, you can still be a success in life overall, even though you've come up short in individual categories. I know it's totally rude, and I know you're my boss, but I just have to know. Are those real? <laughs> yes, they are, Leela, but we are not here to discuss my breasts. Now, pay attention. Don't make me have to smack you. <laughs> you know, you act a lot like my mom. She was totally independent like you. You know, I mean, nobody told her what to do. I remember she had these long magenta fingernails and she wore these, these five-inch rhinestone heels to church. <laughs> In fact, these are her earrings. That's all I got to remember her by are these seashells. It's funny. They say you can hear the ocean in them, but you can't in these. They're dead quiet. You know, like when it's late at night and there's snow on the ground? <laughs> I remember lying in my bed and that's exactly how it sounded the night she died. Check. I'm too sexy for my hat. Too sexy for my hat. What you think about that? I'm a model. You know what I mean. And I do my little turn on the catwalk. Yeah, on the catwalk. On the catwalk. Yeah, I shake my little tush on the catwalk. I know what you want, turkey jerky, and I am on my way. <laughs> hey, what's this, a telegram? Did you guys put this on my desk? It came this morning, Veda. Oh, cool. 
Dear Ms. Walkman, this is to inform you that your services as an intern in the offices of Representative Suzanne Sugarbaker are hereby terminated as of the below mentioned date. A severance amount of up to but not exceeding two weeks pay will be added to your final check. Thank you for all your hard work with kindest regards. Suzanne Sugarbaker, Carbon Copy S. Emerson, and Hollingsworth. Freaking hilarious. I mean, this is like my donkey. You know, for a minute there, you had me going because, you know, I was going to quit because I didn't think anybody liked me. <laughs> I'm too sexy for my job. Too sexy for my job. Too sexy for my job. <laughs>